Hello everyone and welcome to the Genetics and Genomics virtual event. My name is Jonas Korlach. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Specific Biosciences and I will be presenting on highly accurate long sequence reads for comprehensive genomic analysis. Please feel free to submit questions during my presentation and I will follow up with you via email. My presentation will cover two topics today. At first, I will introduce highly accurate long sequence reads that are uniquely enabled by the PEC sequencing technology, and then I will talk about the new SQL2 system that we just launched two weeks ago. For those of you who are not familiar, single molecule real-time or smart sequencing is based on the ability to detect single polymerase molecules as they synthesize DNA and read off the bases that are being incorporated into a growing DNA chain and this is detected on the SQL instrument, uh, previously the SQL 1, and now uh, the SQL 2 instrument that I will be talking about in a little bit. And with regard to the uh, sequence performance, like bio is characterized by very long reads, high consensus accuracy, and minimal GC percent and sequence complexity bias. And this slide uh, just shows that for uh, large inserts, uh, greater than 20,000 bases or so, which we call continuous long reads or CLR, with the latest uh, SQL system chemistry version 6 release, we have increased all of those performance parameters. I will not go into those in detail because that's not the focus of today's talk, uh, and you can look at our website at pacb.com for more information. Um, this is because I would like to focus today's presentation on uh, circular Consensus Sequencing, or CCS, which is a unique way of doing long fragment insert sequencing um, for intermediate size fragments um, up to about 20,000 bases. The template molecule that is used, utilized in PEC sequencing um, undergoes a procedure whereby we ligate hairpin adapters, which makes the molecule topologically circular. And as you can see here in this cartoon, the polymerase will then um, sequence this so-called smart bell, open up the structure, and generate multiple subreads from this particular DNA molecule, both from the forward strand in purple and the reverse strand in yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. So with this technology, it's possible to sequence the same base of the same DNA molecule multiple times, and then you can take these subreads that may have random errors, which are designated with the red dots here, and build consensus from those subreads to arrive at a very highly accurate long read. So you can see in this example distribution on the right, which shows the read length on the x-axis and the density of data of bases in uh, those particular read length um, uh, areas, that we've completely shifted the distribution so that most of the data are now in very, very long reads. And so these are the raw reads are characterized by uh, an average overall throughput of up to 50 gigabases of um, polymerase reads. The average read length is, in this particular example, 84,000 bases. Half of the data are contained in reads that are greater than 167,000 bases. And on the SQL 1 system, you get about a half a million uh, reads. Now, I said that we're going around in circles with the cartoon. So how many passes do you need to get a highly accurate long read? Uh, not that many. Four passes for Q20, or 99% read accuracy, and 10 passes for Q30, or 99.99% accuracy. And so what you then end up with in the end as your CCS reads, high quality, greater than 99% accurate reads, is depending on the insert size, um, between 150,000 to 500,000 reads. So in this example on the right, um, for a 9.8, Average, kilobase average insert size, 290,000 CCS reads for a total effective yield of 2.84 gigabases of highly accurate long reads. And as before, as with CLR, the GC percent and sequence complexity bias is minimal, which is a hallmark of PEC biosequencing. So um, this really changes um, and adds a new dimension to um, uh, sequencing applications. As you know, we've lived in an environment where we've had these two worlds until now, where there were short, accurate reads and long, uh, noisy reads that had a lot more error. So in this analogy, uh, Steph Curry here in basketball, he will always make a layup 100% of the time, and he's still pretty good from three-point range. But um, what I would like to describe is the new capabilities, a third world, as it was, as it were, um, when you have 
uh, very long, accurate CCS reads. So the analogy would be that Steph Curry makes a three-point shot 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and there are many applications where this new paradigm can be applied. The first one is shown here in the area of targeted sequencing. This is a slide that was presented by Stuart Scott, uh, who is at Mount Sinai and Semaphore at the uh, last American Society for Human Genetics meeting. And this talk is also recorded, and you see the link on the uh, bottom of the slide. And uh, he's interested in, among others, uh, pharmacogenomic genes. And what is shown here is an 11,000 base um, uh, segment of a pharmacogenomic gene that he sequenced with um, the PEC virus sequel system. And on the top, you can see uh, <coughs> the uh, pink and blue rows. Each row, uh, each of these lines represents a full-length, high-quality CCS read. Uh, and you can see that they, are, can, they can be um, segregated into two blocks, uh, representing the two alleles, the maternal copy and the paternal copy. And you can see the quality of those reads, their full-length gene sequencing, and how the variants, which are the vertical lines, either heterozygous or homozygous SNPs and indels, are phased, are connected with regard to the two alleles. This is not just true for um, substitutions. Here I'm uh, zooming into an uh, insertion that's 25 bases, and you can see how clean the data is, and not just substitutions are detected, but also indels. Um, the second area that I would like to highlight uh, for the utility of CCS reads is metagenomics. Uh, two examples. This is the first one in targeted metagenomics for full length 16S ribosomal RNA gene sequencing. There is a recent preprint from a collaboration that, that we had with Mike Doherty and other researchers showing that it is now possible to uh, completely resolve the 16S RNA gene at full length with high quality using the CCS reads. And what the paper describes is that it's now possible to identify the multiple copies that the bacteria tend to have of the 16S gene. Uh, so previously, as you see in the crossed out upper right um, cartoon, only one 16S sequence is identified and put into the database. But of course, many bacteria have multiple copies, and they can differ in their sequence. And so here, for this Steph Aureus example, there are three copies that have identical sequence in yellow, and then three additional copies that each have a unique sequence. And this paper describes that this can now be completely resolved with high accuracy and quality with the PEC virus CCS capability. And then in the other area of metagenomics, in shotgun metagenomics, it's now possible to take 8 to 10 KB fragments of DNA where the extraction allows for such a high quality and arrive at extremely highly accurate reads with high uh, throughput because at this length scale, oftentimes uh, open reading frames and sometimes even biosynthetic pathways are contained on a single molecule that is sequenced. No assembly is required for gene discovery, and so it becomes very efficient to uh, discover new genes, discover more proteins of interest uh, compared to alternative technologies. Uh, and then lastly, before I get to human uh, genome sequencing, the utility of CCS reads is also very um, high in the area of full-length RNA sequencing, or ISOSeq. Um, we now have the version 3 of the ISOSeq software and workflow that discovers uh, that recovers 20% more genes per smart cell, has a much faster runtime and improved stability and unified support for demultiplexing. My colleague Liz Seng has developed a tool called ISOPHASE, that takes into account the small differences, once again, between the maternal and the paternal uh, genes and can cluster um, the reads into the two alleles. And so you can see allele-specific differences in splicing patterns in the abundance of gene expression. And then lastly, a new application that is um, uh, coming out and, and is being utilized, increasingly utilized, is in the era of single cell full length um, RNA sequencing, single cell ISOC. There was a paper a little while ago by Hagen Tildner, a few presentations at the recent AGBT meeting. If you're interested, check out our website on that. So then finally, um, I'd like to spend the rest of the presentation on uh, describing the utility of these high quality long reads uh, for human genome resequencing and de novo assembly. And if you're very interested in this area, I'd like to point your attention to a lot more detail in this recent preprint that was posted on the bioarchives. 
uh, where we collaborated with um, a large number of institutions and leading by some politicians in this area. They're listed um, here on the right side, and we're certainly very grateful um, for their time and uh, uh, collaboration um, uh, with them that we carried out in this project. So for this <coughs> uh, demonstration, we used a what is arguably the best characterized human genome sample uh, from the genome in the bottle, that's the HG002 sample. And the reason for this is that this is uh, arguably the human genome sample for which uh, variants are best known and verified um, from the Genome in the Bottle Consortium so that we could compare our data to what was uh, known uh, to the best possible um, quality from the reference material. So the first, um, and the paper then describes that uh, uh, one of the benefits of the uh, high quality BCS reads or high fi reads as we call them is that they can be more unambiguously mapped to more of the genome. So one of the figures of the preprint uh, describes that at the highest mapping quality, these hi fi reads can be mapped to about 3% more of the human uh, genome GRCH37 reference. And a couple of examples here, um, because the reads are still quite long, but also highly accurate, they map very easily to repetitive regions. So in this IGV screenshot on the top, you see uh, the PEC bio reads. Uh, again, mapping very un uh, uniquely and very confidently, and you can phase again into the two alleles. Um, and here's another example of improved mapping in reference divergent regions. So in this very uh, colorful uh, sector here, um, the sequence of this particular sample differs quite markedly um, from the reference, uh, but because the reads are long, um, they span through this region, and you can confidently map throughout this region and resolve this region uh, completely. And then finally, in the area of de novo assembly, um, we found that um, the pac CCS reads uh, give more accurate and more correct representations of the uh, final sequence. And so the green curve uh, outlines this. And um, I don't have time to describe this graph in great detail, but uh, you can see that compared to the pac CLR in orange or other competing technologies, um, you get a much higher representation of high-quality sequence on the order of Q50, half of the genome is Q50 or greater, and all of the genome essentially is Q40 or greater, and that compares favorably to previous approaches. <coughs> so then finally, um, I'd like to go into this in a little bit more detail, but in the context of introducing the new SQL2 system, which as we said, we just launched uh, formally and is now available, um, please go to our website, uh, the link is down on the bottom. Uh, to check out the performance and the characteristics of the SQL2 system. In a nutshell, we have um, changed um, the smart cell um, to an increased multiplex from 1 million to 8 million. And so it uh, is pretty much a straight up increase in yield to play about a factor of eight, which then results in a reduced project time, lower cost, while, and this is important, of course, um, maintaining an equivalent performance to the previous SQL system. So here's an example of where the data for CCS being overlaid um, in yellow, you can see the SQL system, and then in blue, you can see the SQL 2 system. And uh, you can see that the distributions are essentially identical, but you just get a lot more reads. And also, you can see that we've actually improved, and there's uh, a longer tail of uh, very long polymerase reads in excess of 250 up to 300 kilobases in length. So, um, with a factor of eight, then, um, the overall yield per smart cell run is uh, typically uh, can exceed 300 gigabases that then is being um, uh, translated into a CCS yield of highly accurate uh, long reads of about 16 gigabases. And in terms of accuracy, uh, you see 99.8%, that is the average, uh, so similar to before. But in fact, we have uh, even improved on the number of passes that it takes for the SQL2 system. Uh, recall that in the beginning of the presentation, I told you that it takes 10 passes for Q30 or 99.9% .9 accuracy. With the SQL2 system on the bottom, you can see that it only takes eight passes. So uh, you get to consensus faster, and so more reads will um, uh, uh, fall into that filter setting. Um, before the, we launched the system formally two weeks ago, um, we had an early access program where we uh, placed the SQL2 system at five selected customer sites, 
and ask the researchers to run both control and real-world samples using a pre-release chemistry version. And this uh, got off to a very good start. Um, this is Jeremy Schmutz uh, from Hudson Alpha uh, presenting on the very first smart cell in SQL2 system that was ever run outside of the PacBio uh, laboratories. And uh, he got 63 gigabases of data. Uh, this was a sorghum sample that um, he then used for a de novo assembly, a high quality de novo assembly of about 720 megabases. And the contiguity, the contig in 50 of 11.9 megabases was over an order of magnitude, about an order of magnitude larger than what he had compared to his current reference. And it was also highly accurate uh, with less than uh, one in 10,000 uh, basis error. Overall, here are the, control, the results from the entire early access program. 120 smart cells were run, only three run failures, so the system is very stable and reliable. And um, both control and uh, user samples were run. Actually, 80% of the samples of this program were uh, real-world uh, samples that the researchers were interested in. And then on the left, you see the CLR results, 51 smart cells. The average yield was 75 gigabases, which is exactly uh, pretty much eight fold uh, compared to what the researchers get right now with the SQL1 system over the global install base, and the average read length was about 20 kilobases. And on the right with the CCS mode, 66 smart cells were run. The average yield was um, 300 gigabases. Then that's about a factor of 12, and that's largely because longer movie times are um, available in the SQL2 system, uh, resulting in an average CCS yield of 18 gigabases and average raw read length of 75 kilobases. So then coming back and um, applying the new uh, higher throughput of the SQL2 system to the genome in the bottle sample, uh, I'd like to show you some of the uh, newer data that are not part of the preprint uh, because they were run on the SQL2 system. So with regard to structure variant calling, those are uh, genetic variants defined as greater than 50 bases in size. Um, the overview is that you can now use the new uh, version of the smart analysis software to run both the mapping and then the structure variant calling using our PBSD structure variant caller. Uh, and as a result, you'll get a VCF file that gives you the structure variants. This works very well. As you know, uh, PACTIO is a very comprehensive, provides a comprehensive view of structure variants. And that is also the case, of course, for the SQL2 system but with much higher throughput, uh, lowering the cost and the time for these types of projects. And you can see on the right, very excellent recall and precision relative to the genome in the bottle truth set. Here are some examples. This is a heterozygous allo deletion in HG001, actually. Uh, you can see on the bottom, 319 uh, in one of the alleles, but the bottom allele um, where it says the number 319. And you can see how clean the data are. Uh, each read showing precisely the right insertion, the right deletion size, and all the SNPs uh, that are neighboring um, this particular deletion, and they're all phased as well. Here's a homozygous line deletion uh, that where the, um, there's a gap there, but the reads are spanning this gap completely. Uh, high uh, confidence detection of this deletion, and this is what an in inversion uh, looks like in the APP intronic um, uh, region where you have these breaks and the uh, color inversion from pink to blue and then and, and back. With regard to small variant calling, this is now um, uh, in, um, much improved with the um, HiFi capability. And um, you can initially use the GATK haplotype caller that's been used extensively um, for uh, single nucleotide variation calling. And you can see that on the right in this table, <coughs> that um, for single nucleotide variants, precision and recall is, is quite respectable, uh, but for indels, it's not quite uh, good, only in the 80s of percent. And so um, the haplotype caller, GATK, expects an error mode of short reads, which is characterized by high mismatch error and the low indel error. However, with the PEC bio data, it's actually quite um, the opposite. There is a higher indel error and a much lower mismatch error. So we collaborated with Google and uh, the Deep Variant Caller team to adapt pipelines for the unique characteristics of the PECBIO CCS data. And you can see that with the new data type specific model, with Deep Variant learning the error model of the HiFi reads from training data, 
we can now, in the table on the right, do an excellent job of both on CNB precision and recall as well as Indel precision and recall. Uh, so there's improved um, detection and sensitivity for both SMBs and Indel. And then, of course, with the long reach, the long range information can be used to phase the small, phase the small variants. Um, you can use WhatsApp for that, and you can see on the table again on the right that um, there are substantial um, uh, phase blocks. Uh, this is three smart cells, eight M on HC002, and um, so you get both small variant calls, and it automatically provides long range phasing information. I, I should note, however, that of course the phase block size is driven by the heterozygosity and the insert length, so uh, the type of sample, human versus plant animal, and also the type of library that you're making. And so um, these data then, in summary, are highly concordant in the high confidence region from the genome in the bottle, and here's an example shown uh, where the top is the genome in the bottle truth, and then uh, below that is the deep variant set, so you can see they're very concordant. But in addition, there are many regions for example, duplicated regions or regions that have pseudogenes, um, where you can see there is a gap. Um, there's a blank space for the genome in the bottle truth, uh, and the deep variant uh, provides SNP data uh, because of the longer, um, highly accurate PEC bio read. Um, so then you may ask, what kind of coverage do I need for doing these types of experiments? And this is analyzed in the uh, preprint. And what we see really that for SMVs on the left, in belt with the variant, you can see that at about 15 fold coverage, both precision and recall have largely saturated. And fortuitously, this is also the case with structure variants, uh, which is shown here, and with regard to de novo assembly. Um, so here um, it is all uh, put on the um, on one slide, and you can see that 15 fold high fidelity coverage, which is about two to three smart cells, depending on the quality of the library. Um, two to three smart cells, 8M, uh, uh, in our recommendation, provides the best current trade-off between the cost and the results. Uh, there are um, example data sets available uh, on the, from the SQL2 system. If you are interested in looking at this yourself and analyzing the data, there are several human samples that are all listed here, and I won't go into that, but HC001, 2, and 5 um, that are uh, publicly available and you can um, explore those data. So in summary, um, this uh, new uh, data type allows you to, with these PECBio HIFI reads, it allows you to accurately call small variants and structure variants for over 90% of the human genome. And 15-fold coverage with, uh, say, 11 KD inserts provides a good trade-off between cost and uh, results. So with that, I will uh, stop, but not before. I would like to thank the entire scientific community. Um, uh, they continue to invest in applying the PEC biotechnology, and we are very grateful for their time and efforts and for the um, collaborations and um, working together with them that have by now resulted in well over 5,000 publications, um, about five new papers per day uh, in all different areas of science, and uh, I am very excited to see what will be possible now in this new third world of um, having highly accurate long reads um, opening these new application spaces that I mentioned. And then lastly, um, I'd like to um, uh, point out a uh, new uh, smart grant um, uh, program, um, which closes on May 17th. And um, if you're interested, you can actually win some free sequencing on the SQL2, on the new SQL2 system. This particular smart grant, we have many throughout the year, but this particular one is in the area of human transcriptome research. So if you want to do some isoseq, um, studies and um, leverage the higher throughput of the SQL2 system, um, you can go to pacb.com slash smart grant and uh, enter your um, uh, proposal there. And then lastly, um, I'm excited um, that we will have a webinar on June 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific uh, time where three of the uh, three researchers who were part of the early access program for the SQL2 system will be describing their experiences and their results um, uh, generated with the SQL2 system, providing around eight times more data, even more highly accurate long reads, and uh, resulting in reduced project times for faster results. So um, if you're interested in hearing them speak about their experiences, please go and register at pecb.com events.
And with that, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions. And um, uh, thank you very much. And uh, goodbye.